Alright, hello everybody, this is Zach with uh, AWA Rocket League, and today we're going to be going over the Open Rocket Refresher tutorial for L1 certifications. Um, so, just to preface this, this is going to be uh, a refresher, as I said. Um, you should have basic knowledge of Open Rocket from Rocket League. I'm still going to hit everything here, so um, everything should be uh, pretty much covered. I'm just going to design pretty much a basic L1, and then we'll sim it. And then in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just design the nose cone uh, because you should be familiar with um, the fins and the centering rings. But uh, for now, uh, here we are in Open Rocket, so uh, we can just get straight into it. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is just uh, check your preferences uh, units. Uh, I'm going to be doing this whole thing in uh, default Imperial. Um, I'm not sure if all of these are in Imperial, but I, I may have edited this, but just try to match your units just so we're consistent here. Um, but otherwise, there's no other settings you really need to change. Um, so this is obviously just the basic uh, Rocket League main screen here. Uh, I can click on Sustainer, and then that'll give me my three options here. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is grab a body tube. Um, now, you can uh, get a tube from anywhere. Um, what I do recommend is purchasing off of Apogee Rockets these uh, lock body tubes which have presets. Uh, so not only do they have a preset so you can guarantee that the weight and the uh, dimensions are accurate, uh, but they are also uh, very strong and designed for rockets. So if you buy a mailing tube, you can't guarantee that it will actually uh, hold up to the forces of uh, the rocket itself. But what I'm going to be doing is the, the uh, custom preset. Um, so what you would do is... Um, it would say add a part here, but you would search up lock and then um, it would be lock BT3. Uh, so that is a three inch uh, inner diameter tube uh, with a 34 inch length. This is actually the same tube we give you guys for Rocket League, so it's a very good tube. Highly recommend it. Uh, you can stack two of these, you can split it, um, but I'm just going to keep it as one single tube for now. And as you can see, it has the uh, mass and everything set up properly. Um, so yeah, if you do get your own tube, make sure you do the measurements properly because the outer and inner diameter do make a difference. Um, I know Office Depot sells a 36 inch tube, but for now we're just going to use this tube. So right there we have our body tube, uh, so that just gets placed in our little uh, view down here. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go straight to the nose cone. Uh, before um, I even change anything, this is a problem here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it on top of the body tube. Uh, and as you can see, now it just looks weird, um, but we can fix that by clicking this little button here, automatic. Uh, that will automatically make the base diameter the exact same as the tube, which was 3.1. Uh, and then for 3D printing purposes, I'm going to do a thickness of 0.2 inches on that. Um, and one more thing is that you're going to want to change the component material here to polycarbonate. Uh, this is not PLA, I will say that, uh, however, it is the pretty much the same density like almost exact so this should be about the mass you'll get it off the uh, 3d printer um, and what I'll do is I will set this up to let's just do seven inches because that looks like a good length uh, and you can obviously customize this don't make it too long though because I think the printers do have a maximum height uh, you'll have to ask the TI lab about that though so uh, next thing we're gonna do the shoulder uh, the inner diameter of this tube is 3 inches, so we'll do 3. Um, and then the length, you always want to be one body tube diameter as well, so we'll just do 3. Uh, and uh, thickness is 0.2, so uh, there's that. Um, so basically we have the nose cone with the shoulder, and that's done with the nose cone right there. <clears throat> as you can see, we now have stability values, CG and CP values. Uh, right now we have absolutely zero stability, basically, because... Uh, CP is way up here, but um, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on the body tube again uh, And we're going to do the inner tube uh, This is going to be your motor tube uh, same thing here I don't recommend making this homemade just because it has to hold up to the forces and the heat of a motor so I would recommend the uh, lock MMTs uh, and the one we would be using is uh, 1.14 that is 29 millimeters uh, It was, was 1.14 inches, but um the uh, motor we're using is uh, 29 millimeter. Uh, you can obviously use a uh, bigger diameter uh, motor, but I prefer the 29 mils. Um, so they do come when you purchase these in a 34 inch tube. Again, 
Uh, but realistically, you only need uh, 10 inches on that. Honestly, even like eight would work. Because I believe the motor is like eight inches long, so you can just cut that at home. Um, and then we click on this motor thing and click this component as a motor mount. That's extremely important so that the uh, sim knows to put the motor there. So now that we actually have a motor tube, we can actually add a motor. So I go to, at the top here, I click on this motors and configuration tab, click on new configuration, and we're doing an L1 here. So you're gonna wanna drag this to H. Um, and I have it set automatically to limit the diameter. So it's only giving me the 1.14s. These are all 29 millimeter. And I'm gonna look for H135. This is the motor we use. Um, they come with a 14 second delay. So set this to 14 seconds. We can change it later. I have a delay cutter and you'll see that on launch day. But for now, leave it at 14 and you will change it based on what the uh, results of the simulation are. Don't change it yet. Just leave it at 14 because that's what they come sold as. So we just click OK there, and it should put the uh, motor right in its spot. And actually, I will have to modify this. So yeah, we'll, we'll go back to 10 inches. That's fine. OK, so uh, next up, we'll go to body tube, and I will click on centering ring. Uh, I'm going to offset this negative uh, 0.5 so that I have room for the uh, motor retainer down there. Uh, the thickness is going to be 0 0.118. This is eighth inch plywood. It is not 0.125. It's 0.118. It's a really weird thing going on there. Um, but the other values are automatic because it can see that the uh, inner diameters here is three and the um, uh, of the body tube and the outer diameter of the uh, motor tube is 1.21. So it can automatically do that. And we are making these out of birch plywood. So there's one centering ring, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste this twice, and then I can move these, just um, kind of just evenly space them. And go like right there. Yeah, that should be good. So now you'll have um, three centering rings there, and now we have a, uh, a rocket, uh, essentially without fins. So that's obviously the next item. I will go over here and select trapezoidal fins. Don't recommend these other shapes uh, just because they're really weird to cut and d hard to design. I, I wouldn't do that. Just do uh, trapezoidal. Uh, they're pretty simple. And I'm not going to mess with them too much now, but I'm just going to kind of create a basic shape and then we'll mess with the stability later. Um, but for now, I will just, we're making these out of birch plywood again. Uh, root cord, we'll do. No, eight uh, big fins. Uh, your tip cord's always got to be shorter than your root cord, otherwise you're gonna ruin, d destroy your fins. Literally, uh, height has a pretty big effect on um, on stability. So as you can see, when I bring the height way up there, uh, and obviously I, I forgot to change this. You're gonna want four fins, uh, not not three, just because that's a lot easier to uh, design. Um, so yeah, that's a basic fin shape and actually we're at the stability we want anyways. Um, but for now I will just go here and, um, on the fin tabs tab, uh, literally just click calculate automatically and it will automatically fit, uh, fin tabs in between these centering rings. But you know, I actually don't like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that middle centering ring and move it up. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. And then what I can do is calculate these again. So that's a, a bigger area that you're in there. Um, that actually did affect my stability, but um, for now, yeah, that's good. And you don't you don't have to change this unless you actually plan on sanding down your fins. So I would not I would not change that. Um, so that's your basic uh, fin geometry there, and we can play with that later. So you can see how mess with these values, and you can see how they uh, change your uh, stability and stuff like that um, but yeah so this is the exterior of the rocket pretty much done uh, I can actually add um, what are they called rail buttons um, I don't know this doesn't really matter I've never added rail buttons on there for it's more of just a visual thing uh, so now what I'm gonna do is we will add the parachute uh, and we give you 12 inch parachutes, although you can uh, pick different ones. Um, 
So if you want to buy your own, they are quite expensive, but we give a 12 inch parachute, which should be uh, plenty for the rocket. Uh, we'll set the drag coefficient to like 1.2. Um, this could be 12. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what the chute is. Um, but then your pack length and pack diameter, this doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the mass of the component that much. Um, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move this downward and you're going to want this to be pretty much right there. Um, now normally this would be a concerning location but you are going to have a chute protector and the shock cord but um, when the rocket's going up the force of the launch will shove that chute down on top of the motor tube so you want it to be um, where it would be during flight. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to alter this to a specific altitude during descent, 500 feet. That's where your chute release comes in. Um, I don't do the dummy chutes for L1s just because it isn't really necessary. That's more so the uh, simulation's a little more accurate in terms of the uh, tumbling on the way down, but uh, you don't really need that dummy chute if you remember it from Rocket League. Uh, we just do the uh, chute release, so uh, the parachute will deploy at 500 feet, and that's the chute. Um, so now, what I will do is I will add shock cord, and it will be elastic cord, and you want the total length to be 3x body tube length. So what I will do is 42 times 3, because I'm not interested in doing mental math, and we get 126. So you have 126 inches of shock cord. I know that seems like a lot, but trust me, that is how much you want. Uh, and then we will also move this all the way down here, right in between because uh, that's going to attach to that top centering ring and then um, one thing that you will have at the uh, top here is a bulkhead so we have to add that and this can be made out of plywood birch thickness is 0.118 um, actually we're going to want top plus zero and then we will move this down right there. Um, so that is where the uh, shock cord will, att will attach to the nose cone. Because if, if you're not splitting your rocket. But uh, if you are splitting your rocket, your bulkhead will go at the bottom of the coupler. Right in the middle there. Um, but basically you would have an eye bolt off the top of this. So that's the next thing I can do. is uh, That's not an item. So I click on mass component. And I will do 0 0.5 ounces. Very light. Um, and then just move it right there. So that's your eye bolt. Same thing, we'll actually copy and paste this, and then I will move it to the bottom, and zero inches. That's your motor retainer. Uh, we'll do like plus 0.5, yeah, and they'll hang out at the bottom there. Um, so that's also 0.5 ounces, and then uh, one more 0.5 ounce for the chute release. And that one can go like right, basically right on top of the parachute. So now we have all of our mass items, and this rocket is actually stable. Um, so it's right at that threshold of 2 to 2.5, so I would not actually have to modify this in any way possible, unless I wanted my apogee to go lower. So one of the things that you can do to lower your apogee is obviously adding weight to your rocket. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do that. I know some people have used clay, uh, and I know some people not some people, me personally for my L2, I'm going to be adding um, glass beads and filling them in the nose cone instead of printing the nose cone filled just because that would be heavier. Um, and like obviously you can alter the weight of things by clicking override mass and we can uh, change the weight and that would obviously uh, mess up your thing there. So like if I add a little bit of weight to the nose cone that would uh, move my center of gravity up. It actually increases stability but it did lower my apogee just a little bit. So... Um, but we'll undo that because this is pretty accurate. I'm going to do this uh, raw style. Uh, we're not adding any weight to this. Uh, this is pretty much the, what it would be. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much an L1. You do want to keep this under 2,500. Uh, low and slow wins the game just because your only goal is to get that rocket back. And if it's way too high up, you might lose that thing very far off. Um, so the next step is let's find out our flight path and delay. Um, so run this... Uh, simulation. I don't know why my ground hit velocity is so high. That's a problem. Actually, I lied. We have 24 inch shoots. That's why. Um, 
So yeah, ignore what I did at the beginning. This should be a 24 inch parachute. Um, so yeah, uh, ideally you want this under uh, 20.8. Uh, ideally you want it under 20, but I don't. Um, I think that's just because it's a little heavier. So like if I removed a, a little weight from the nose cone, I run it again. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't change much. Um, if it's twenty or under, it should be fine. Uh, so we'll, we'll change this back to seven. Uh, my stability came down a little, so we'll uh, do like three point two. There we go. Run this again. Um, and basically, what you want to note from this is the optimum delay time. Um, this is actually off usually. So what I can do is I can double click on that and click plot. And I will find out now where my apogee is. Uh, you want this thing to pop basically right at apogee or just barely after it. So what I'm seeing here is my apogee is just after 10 seconds. So realistically, I can have my delay at 10 or you can have it at 12, but you don't want it. Um, the default was 14. We do not want it at 14. Uh, reason being, um, if we had it at 14, this thing would basically go ballistic for all of this time. Um, and it, it, would, it would fall down way too fast and then it would um, yeah it, you would rip your parachute um, but what we're gonna do is uh, we will now go back and what I can do is double click on this motor tube and I will change my delay to 10 and we can cut that on site so now we have an H135-10 and if I run this uh, simulation again plot it so now it would pop like right there and then you would have it tumble and then the shoot release is right there but um, that's basically the entire uh, L1 right there um, there's not much else you have to add unless you again mass components for any additional electronics or weight you plan on adding but uh, otherwise that's pretty much done and if you wanted to split it you would just put the tube coupler in the middle um, but there's uh, nothing else in so you can like play around with all of these values uh, see how that affects the fins and stuff like that um, so yeah but you just want to make sure your stability is uh, between 2 and 2.5 so uh, so yeah that's pretty much the uh, L1 rocket tutorial um, so get to designing if you have questions you can send it to me uh, but uh, yeah happy certifying <laughs>